What up is Marcus Dynasty Football Dads. Happy Monday. We are going to be doing Dynasty Wide Receivers and Superflex. It is honestly the position that maybe I devalue the most. Is that right? Is that wrong? Leave a comment in the box below. But the biggest thing is value-based drafting is one of the biggest things that I think is important. You want to have a team that is going to have more value in the draft especially. And I see a lot of these wide receivers as replaceable. And I see a lot of these wide receivers, really, if you're going to get a, a running back that has 20 points and a wide receiver that has 12, let's just say 32 points. And if you have a wide receiver that gets you 20, but a running back that gets you eight, that's 28 points. Well, who is going to have more points on a per basically week basis? The wide receivers, and, and I just did a mock draft of, set, uh, of being at number seven. And so... Um, we have Justin Jefferson at six, uh, sorry, Jamar Chase at six, Justin Jefferson at eight, CeeDee Lamb at 16, Cooper Cup at 18. These are wide receivers that I'm just not gonna own. I, I won't. In super flex leagues, I'm gonna be prioritizing quarterbacks and running backs right away. In the first three rounds, it's almost always gonna be that kind of core group. It's gonna be two quarterbacks, one running back, one quarterback, two running backs. The only asterisk to this, and we're going to talk about this at the, one of the next videos, is tight ends. There might be one or two tight ends that sneak into that group. But besides that, if his name's not Kyle Pitts, <clears throat> then I am not going to be drafting. Uh, I'm going to be drafting a quarterback and running backs in the first three rounds. So where does that put us? That crosses off Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. And, 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 and of, the, of course, like if Justin Jefferson lands at 15, that's going to be... That's going to be maybe that 1% that happens, but I don't think that that's going to happen in very many leagues. But that crosses off C.D. Lamb at 16. Sorry, C.D. Lamb. Co uh, Cooper Cup at 18. Debo Samuel at 19. A.J. Brown at 20. Um, Tyreek Hill at 24. Jalen Waddle at 25. So now we're into the third round. Third round, we have Devontae Adams, D.K. Metcalf, T. Higgins, Really, well, we're just going to kind of cross those guys off because they're going to be in the third round. So we really need to find somebody that is 40 and on, right? That's that's going to be into that fourth round and on. You're talking about Stephon Diggs at 42, which again, if you have a core of a quarterback and two running backs or two quarterbacks and one running back, Stephon Diggs as your quarterback or as your wide receiver one is an excellent choice. Then it gets a little risky. We have Drake London and Traylon Burks and Garrett Wilson all between 46 and 57. For majority of my teams, I'm staying away from those players. Not because they're bad, but because a lot of my teams, I want to win in the next 24 to 36 months. There's too much risk with Drake Vaughn. There's too much risk with Traylon Burks. There's too much risk with Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson could is, is probably going to be the next DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson. But why don't I just draft the guys that I already know are going to be that valuable and still have a little bit of upside, like DJ Moore, wide receiver two, Always wide receiver two. If he finally gets a quarterback someday, he could be wide receiver one. But we know what we're going to get. DJ Moore, speaking of that, he is 53. Deontay Johnson, 50. Wide receivers that I both really like. I was a big Deontay Johnson fan coming out of actually college. And I had him in almost a ton of a ton of rosters. And it's funny because everyone didn't want him. And then slowly there was just this migration of like, oh my goodness, he's amazing. Like, I want him. Uh, maybe it's just because his, his value kind of was tied into ben, Big Ben, but so DJ Moore 53, Terry McLaurin 59. Again, these are prime players that I am loving as my wide receiver one, consistent players. Terry McLaurin pretty consistent as well. Um, I'm just gonna even go to Terry McLaurin here. Uh, does it show, show fantasy finish? Oh, 24, 23, 24, or 29, 20, 25. So these are wide receiver twos, end of wide receiver twos, but they're gonna be consistent. I can get a little bit more uh, risky when it comes... I don't know, it slammed on the table. A little bit more risky uh, when we start getting down there. Chris Godwin at 60 uh, ADP is, a, uh, again, we're talking about fifth round now. We're starting to get in. He seems to be one of my top wide receivers. He's devalued right now because of he's recovering from that injury, uh, from the ACL injury. Devontae Smith, I still think is a value. Devontae Smith at 64. I understand. A.J. Brown's there. Jalen Hurts there. Miles Sanders there. It's a mess. But if you told me, if Devontae Smith was in this class, yes, I understand he's a little bit older. If you told me Devontae Smith, Elijah Moore, 64, 65, where would you have them in the rookie draft? The rookie draft with Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Traylon Burks. They would be my number one number with two wide receivers. I have them over these wide receivers. Why? Elijah Moore, I think, is more talented. I really do than Garrett Wilson. I understand the draft capital changes a little bit, but I think that he is more talented than Garrett Wilson, just by a hair. 
And then Devontae Smith, I think, is the elite. I think he has elite talent. And, and him at 64, like I am snagging. Sometimes I'm doing back-to-back -back wide receivers here in the fifth, sixth round. And I'm doing, the, again, the two quarterbacks, two running backs. We get into this fifth, sixth round, and I'm taking Devontae Smith and Elijah Moore. Or I'm taking Chris Godwin and Devontae Smith. And if they're not there, I can always take a Michael Pittman at 66. we got a couple more wide receivers, uh, Chris Olave and Jamison Williams at 70 and 72, which a lot of times I do kind of stay away from just a little bit. We do have Hopkins at 75. Oh, no, low battery. No low battery. Okay. <laughs> it just said low battery. I was like, ah! Um... We got Jerry Judy at 76, Keenan Allen at 77, Mike Evans at 81. This is the prime territory. I'm grabbing two, three wide receivers here lots of times. And Cooper at 87. Again, Cooper still super value. Brandon Ayuk, 89. Uh, Marquise Brown, 92. Going to be Kirk Cut or Christian Kirk a little bit plus on the version of this. Um, Rashad Bateman, new wide receiver one in Baltimore, 96, being undervalued. Uh, Michael Thomas, I'm probably going to just keep staying away from him. Uh, Mike Williams at 103. Uh, Cortland Sutton at 113. Just Allen Robinson, well, maybe we'll just avoid him. <laughs> uh, let's keep going now. Calvin Ridley at 113. Eh. Uh, Rondell Moore, yeah. Adam Thielen at 147 could be a, a good fit for, let's just say, a person who owns Chris Godwin because Chris Godwin uh, might not be getting... Uh, be, he might not play the beginning of the year if I can actually talk. Gallup, 142. So let's just compare that to the 140, let's go 100s to whatever uh, running backs and quarterbacks and compare that and see why I would rather have those wide receivers than the running backs and quarterbacks. So we got Tony Pollard. I actually kind of like Tony Pollard. We have Devin Singletary. Uh, Damian Pierce, who again, fourth round running back. They, Houston could draft a, uh, he could be Michael Carter this, this year and then all of a sudden they have drafted another running back. Rashad Penny, being filtered out. Isaiah Spiller, Tyler Algier, again, uh, uh, Chase Edmonds in a huge committee. Alexander Madison, really only valuable if you have Dalvin Cook or if Dalvin Cook is hurt. Uh, Tyron Davis Price, rookie. Cordell Patterson, probably a good one-year player, but ultimately you're not getting a you're not getting a multi-year value like some of these wide receivers in that round in that realm. And then you go, let's go to quarterbacks. This is gonna be funny. Uh, you get Daniel Jones. Uh, Davis Mills, Carson Wentz, Matt Corral, you get Simi, Tom Brady, uh, the GOAT. I, I do like that as a one-year play. Baker May Mayfield, we don't know what's going to happen with him. Jameis Winston, uh, Jared Goff. You're, you're really, I, again, wide receivers. I'm totally taking some of these wide receivers in that area, which is Cortland Sutton, uh, Brandon Cooks. Um, let's see, Michael Gallup, Adam Thielen, Christian Kirk, even lower. Uh, you get Cordell Patterson is technically a wide receiver on sleeper here. Uh, Odell Beckham, does he recover right? Tyler Boyd is a sufficient wide receiver. I talked about Russell Gage. Kenny Galladay still being paid $20 million a year. It, he's got to be hopefully better. I mean, you would think, right? Uh, Terrace Marshall all the way down at 206. Alan Lazard. These could be very sufficient pieces that I think that could be valuable. Uh, I'm trying to look at Keep going, keep going. Nah, 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 nah. Robbie Anderson. Who knows about him? By Ren or uh, by Brian Edwards. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, not Brian Edwards. I just everyone always likes Brian Edwards, and so I, it just the wide receivers. Laquan Treadwell won fantasy championships last year. Hunter Renfro did. Like there are wide receivers that will always pop. Who knows? It could be Paris Campbell again. We could always have the hype of Paris Campbell. I mean, maybe Antonio Brown comes back. <laughs> I have, who knows? But it's like there are so many wide receivers in the depth of wide receivers that I am trying to do wide receivers later. I understand that I'm missing out on Justin Jefferson. I'm missing out on the big wide receivers, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. CD Lamb has not performed as a wide receiver one yet. And so if I'm taking CD Lamb or if I'm taking DJ Moore and that big gap between them, is there a big gap? I don't think there's a huge enough gap versus if you're taking a, a top quarterback versus, I mean, if you're taking a, um, really if you're taking a, from that, from that standpoint, you're taking a Dak Prescott or like a Deshaun Watson versus a Tua slash Kenny Pickett slash Mac Jones. So yeah, it's just too big of a gap. All right, this is Marcus Nice with that. Have a great start to your week. We'll see you soon.